G'day, my name's Tom. Welcome to part 7A, Graded and Action Potentials. Uh, to start off, I just want to introduce you to a graph we'll be looking at a bit later uh, and a few terms that we'll be talking about. Um, so on this axis, we've got the membrane potential of a neuron and on the other axis, we've got time uh, and generally we measure this in milliseconds. I haven't actually put uh, points on, on this, but yeah. Normally there'd be little points there. So anyway, um, of course our resting memory potential is negative 70 millivolts, and that's in blue. Um, and we say that if it goes above uh, the resting membrane potential, it's depolarizing. Uh, if it becomes more positive in respect to the outside of the cell, it's overshooting. Um, that if it, and then when it's coming down, uh, we say that it's repolarizing. So it's coming from a positive back to a negative. Um, and then we say that it, it can also hyperpolarize uh, if it goes farther down than, uh, than its resting membrane potential. So those are a few terms that we'll be using um, in this video. And uh, yeah, so first off, graded potentials. Graded potentials are localized, localized. Um, to an area, and we'll, we'll see why that is in a moment. And also, uh, they're decremental, I think is how you say it. And basically what, that's say, what that means is that uh, the distance uh, is proportional to the inverse of, uh, of the polarization. which could be depolarization or hyperpolarization. Um, uh, another thing uh, about graded potentials is that they can summate. They can be added together uh, to cause a, a greater response. Um, so here, uh, here's just a little graph uh, which illustrates sort of the fact that it's localized, that it's that it can be decremental, and also uh, I might even show that it can summate. Um, so here, um, let's say we had an initial point of depolarization along the membrane, and then we get farther along the membrane uh, as we go left and right. Um, and this axis here is just the membrane potential. So we've stimulated, we've depolarized uh, the membrane, and from this point, it will get gradually less and less. Okay, um, we could do a, a point here, and it would be quicker to go down. Sorry for the wonky lines. Now, it might not be a depolarization uh, stimulation. It could be a hyperpolarization, okay, which would be like this. Uh, could be to a lesser intensity, in which case it would, uh, you know, uh, get lower uh, quicker. So, um, and also, if um, if it's summated, so say we had, um, well, uh, we're, we're already at this point here, okay, but if we also stimulated here, right, uh, so we like this, then this, you know, these two can be added together, and it might be somewhere up here. Um, it's yeah, a bit messy, but that's sort of how it works. These two uh, stimuluses can you know, sort of join forces, if you like, to create a, a higher response. But anyway. So that's graded potentials. Now I want to talk about action potentials. So action potentials are quite different. Um, first up, they're an all or none response. When you saw graded potentials, you saw that it could come it, and it was going up and it was, it was having a graded effect. So at different points on the membrane, it had a lesser or weaker effect. So it was sort of, you could have a maximal or sub-maximal type of thing. But this, in, in action potentials, is it's all or none. So 
it's only maximal uh, responses which uh, are produced. Um, another thing is that in action potentials there are there's a lot of involvement with voltage, gated ion channels. So, and that's what we're going to talk about now. Um, I've got two graphs um, for this bit. Uh, unfortunately, I can't fit them on the same page. So we'll look at this graph first. Um, and here we've got the relative membrane permeability. So as we saw in, saw in part six, at a resting membrane potential, potassium's relative membrane permeability is higher than sodium's. That's illustrated here. Um, and we're, we're uh, measuring this against time uh, in milliseconds. And here you can see I've actually put in some points. Um, on this graph, it's sort of like the one we saw at the very beginning of the video. And um, we've got membrane potential against time, pretty straightforward. And of course, at the moment, we're at resting membrane potential. Okay, so what happens is to get an action potential, we have to have an initial depolarization of the membrane up to or over the threshold. So this threshold is normally about negative 55 millivolts, but it, it can vary. Um, and what happens is when we get to this threshold here, is we're actually uh, allowing voltage-gated ion channels to increase the relative membrane permeability um, of sodium and potassium. So the, the uh, ion-gated, the, sorry, the voltage-gated ion channels are opening, so therefore, you know, they let stuff in yeah, or out of the cell. Um, sodium channels, ion-gated channel, uh, voltage-gated ion channels open very quickly and sort of skyrocket like this, and then they they peak right about there. And of course, what this is doing is allowing sodium to flood into the cell and make it all positive. So, if we look back here, we've come, come to the threshold and all, all those sodium channels that are voltage gated are able to open and lead all that sodium so it becomes, the cell becomes positive in respect to the outside of the cell. And it peaks just less than um, plus 60 millivolts generally. So, that it, that's what happens, um, but it peaks because and it and it's sort of it's sort of like a positive, uh, sort of like a chain reaction, a positive feedback loop because it the more uh, the more positive that the membrane becomes, the more these voltage gated ion channels are opening, and therefore the more it's letting in able to let in. Um, sodium because of the relative membrane permeability is going up. So it's sort of a great big chain reaction and it's stopped quite suddenly and nearly as quickly as it all began uh, by inactivation gates in these uh, sodium ion channels. Um, and what they do is they block from the uh, cytosol side of the cell membrane. Um, they block the, the channel quite quickly and so of course what that's doing is making it the re relative membrane permeability come all the way back down again because it blocks pretty much all of the ones that were activated and then for the rest of uh, this example it's it's at rest so it'll stay down there now what happens with potassium well potassium is a, is a lot slower to act than the um, uh, than the sodium ion channels, and so it starts to come up at about the same time as the peak is happening for the sodium. So the potassium ion channels start opening, and of course this is having a, the opposite effect, where sodium ion channels are opening, it's letting ions into the cell, positive ions into the cell which makes the, uh, the cell membrane more positive. 
but when we open uh, potassium ion channels we're letting ions out of the cell which again are positive and so that's making the cell more negative so when this comes up what it's doing is contributing along with the closing of all those sodium uh, channels <coughs> pardon me um, it's contributing to the repolarization of the cell membrane and it comes all the way down now what actually happens is again because these um, uh, these sodium uh, sorry these potassium ion channels are a bit sluggish to react um, they come back down a bit slower and because they're they're happening a bit slower um, they're making they're continuing to have their effect of making the cell membrane more negative and actually it it goes down a bit farther than the resting membrane potential and this uh, hyperpolarization occurs but of course once it once it gets back to its resting membrane potential state oops it it sort of goes and flatlines there and of course the ions and pumps help sort everything else and they come back to a resting membrane potential. Um, so, you know, it's pretty dramatic that all this can occur just from a little bit of electrical stimulation, a little bit of depolarization. Um, so obviously this can't happen for the opposite. For example, when, it, when we yeah, hyperpolarized the membrane slightly, we didn't see an extreme hyperpolarization of the membrane. That did not occur because there are no uh, voltage-gated ion channels for, for uh, negative that's for for anions uh, in, in sort of in yeah in regular neurons. So anyway, um, but yeah, it, for for the purpose of this, it's only able to do two, uh, depolarization. Um, so yeah, I think that oh actually uh, one thing I should mention, this peak here, it's there uh, they don't have inactivation gates. So on the uh, potassium. Uh, voltage gated ion channels so it's that peak there the only reason it starts going down again is because of course because the uh, because its effect is so although it's although the ion channels are stimulated to open by a positive uh, or a more positive membrane potential they're actually creating a negative membrane potential so they have sort of a negative feedback and they are actually making themselves turn off eventually because it, it gets back past this threshold. So, yeah. So, um, yeah, and also another thing, just with the all or nothing response, is that if if we went way above the threshold, so, you know, just an extreme example, if it went all the way up there, it doesn't mean that it's going to skyrocket the action potential. The action potential is still going to peak just less than 60 uh, millivolts, and that's because um, if we go back to the relative membrane permeability stuff, that peak there, remember, what which you know sort of correlates pretty closely with you know this peak here, is mostly um, mostly about you know. It, that peak is mostly caused by the inactivation gates in the uh, sodium ion channels. Um, so, yeah, it's not like you can go above that, really, by going above the threshold initially. So it's an all-or-nothing response. It's sort of like if you had a gun um, and you sh pulled the trigger. If you pull the trigger really hard, it doesn't mean that the, the bullet is going to go any faster. Um, in the same way as if you pulled it quite soft, it's not going to go any slower. Uh, it's going to go at the same speed as long as you push it hard enough, or in other words, if you get it to the threshold. If, if you don't get it to the threshold in the first instance, then it's just going to go back down. So it'll correct itself. So I hope this video has been useful to you. This has been part 7A, graded and action potentials.